morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody turn in your Bibles to Psalms 97. Now, if you're able to stand for the reading of God's word, please stand. Amen. Psalms 97, brother? Yes, sir. Psalms 4, brother? 97. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Say amen when you get there. Amen. 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 The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him, righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Amen. A fire goeth before him, and burneth up his enemies round about. Amen. His lightnings enlightened the world, the earth saw and trembled. Yeah. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Amen. The heavens declare his righteousness, yes. and all the people see his glory. Amen. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. Amen. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Amen. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Amen. Father, we ask you to bless the reading of your already Amen. blessed word. Amen. 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 Father, Lord, I should bless the house and bless the gift that you've given us. I thank God for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody sing with us. Thank you. 
Hey, Doc. Turn the piano mic up. No, turn my bass mic. Sing it up. Okay, then we're going to do... you got to tell them what page uh, Standing on the Promises, page 329. Thank you, Lord. There you go. Thank you, Lord. You know, this should be the happiest place you guys are. Amen. Amen. Everybody should be smiling. Everybody should be all excited. Amen. We're in the house of the Lord Amen. together. Amen. We're here to share. Amen. We're here to Amen. celebrate. Amen. We're here to celebrate that the Jesus Christ is King. So we need to be excited. We need to come in with an excitement. And we need to share that and spread that to each other. And say, I'm so excited to be in the house of the Lord. So I am excited to be in the house of the Lord. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Who eternally just let his praises sing. Glory in the highest I would shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God.
keep a well down here in summer for rain. I look for Jesus with him all rain. I'm just a pilgrim here. Soon I'll be gone. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home and I'm just a so into God that even on their deathbed they were praising the Lord. They weren't just gone. But they were praising the Lord and I said, you know, my dad was a minister my whole life and there's two songs that came to me when my dad passed away. I can only imagine. And when the reason that I'm standing stands in front of me. How, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought I can only imagine? what you're going to do. I know what I would do. I feel such an excitement. I just said, we're here for a celebration. Amen. And should we go to be with the Lord? I can only imagine. I'm excited here. Can you imagine Amen. what I'm going to yes. do there? Oh, yes. Amen. So I just want everybody to put on your excitement faces today. Amen. Everybody. Amen. <laughs> I can only imagine. Okay. I'll try it. I can only imagine what it'll be like when I walk by your side.
And it's our pressure. or nothing to make me happy with the Lord. If we got Jesus, we got Jesus, we can rejoice in Amen. the Lord today. Amen. And you know, these days, years ago, you seen them shouting and praising the Lord all over. And now, if a saint of God comes into church and they start shouting and acting up a little bit, we look at them and think it's something wrong with them. I'm telling you, God shows me this. God shows me this. Don't think nothing's wrong. Join in. The presence of God and start worshiping God. Amen. No. There ain't nothing wrong with them because if there was God, you wouldn't show me breath all right. That's right. But if they're rejoicing the Lord, don't think something's wrong with them. You can you can do the same thing. Yes, that's right. Just get up out of that lacy chair and start moving with God and praising God. And I thank you. I thank him for the years that I was able to jump and, and shout. Yes. I'm going to be able to do that again. Yes. If it's not Amen. here, it's going to be in Amen. heaven for Amen. Amen. Bless her be Lord. Here. I can even shout greater and more than I shouted down here Amen. upon the, this earth. And you know what? Dying, we should be happy when we see a saint of God go to be with the Lord. They're out of their misery. They're out of the aggravation that this world has put upon them. Amen. With their families or whatever. And you know why? The families, the devil's coming so hard against our families yes, because we're not out there in the world and he can't get us. But 
But so <laughs> just think that's where he's going to come. Glory. That's nothing strange. Glory he's going to come Glory. with our families because uh, he can't get us out there. Glory. But stay in the house of the Lord and it'll make you strong. Amen. And when you get out of the house of the Lord, you're going to get weak. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Glory Glory. Glory. you're going to get weak. You're going to have to start thinking all kinds of crazy things and imaginations and the devil's going to play with your mind Poderoso and you're Dios. just going to sit there and let him do it. Santo Get up Dios. out of there and move for the Lord. Yes. I praise him. I praise him, Brother Ray. Glory to you. Hallelujah. Good word, Sister Mary. Brother Jose and Sister Soily have an appointment to go somewhere, but Sister Soily wanted to pray. Uh, uh, she she wanted yeah. to pray with the sister. Amen. Hallelujah. I am nervous. <laughs> go ahead and pray, Hallelujah. Sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need a uh, pray for me, Sister Mary, in the pastor, right. because... Uh, come up here, Richard. Come up here, Sister Mary. Okay. I want to speak in the Bible. You have to come up here and pray with us, too. Side. Yeah, you say, I need a protection. He blessed my Lord. Bless Hallelujah to me. Touch her, Lord. To use my life, my God, mouth. God's going to use you. Because yeah, I love you, you my Jesus. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord God, as we anoint our sister, Lord God, and lift up her hands in victory, Lord God. Just touch her, Christian, Lord God. Touch her mind, her spirit, her body, Lord God. She needs power. She needs strength. She needs courage. She needs guidance, Lord God. Lord God, touch her now, Lord God. Help her do what you told her to do, Lord God. Use her mightily, Lord God. Use her hands here on earth, Lord God. Lord God, Lord God, Lord God. Just touch her, sister. Just touch her, sister. Good service. Yes. It's great when we can feel the presence of God. Sometimes when I used to hear that as a new Christian, I would think, well, God came down. God's here. But I started to realize, Sister Mary, God's here all the time. We just don't receive it like we should receive it, praise God. You know, it's like the television station. If you turned on your regular TV and Sister Kim, you turned on Channel 3 and Channel 3 was all dark and you said, man, what's going on here? You don't call Channel 3 and say, are you still transmitting? They would say, yes, we are. Well, I'm not getting anything on my TV. Well, maybe it's your antenna. Maybe it's your receiver. We're the receiver, yeah. praise God. God's always transmitting. Always, Amen. praise God. Let's take our Bibles out, if you will. Let's lift them up. Repeat after me with conviction in our heart. This, this is, is my Bible. Bible. This, this is the truth, truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This, this is the Bible word of God. God. Jesus is the word. This is the good news, the good report, the one sound doctrine. This is what I believe in. Stand on, live by it, and trust in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm working on several teachings, and one I shared with you, and it's about the demonic powers of Satan. We're going to get into that coming up in the future, but God's been working with me for a number of weeks, and Sometimes I hear people say, well, we have to pray. We have to believe is another thing. You've got to have faith. You've got to fast. And you know, you got to praise. You've you got to have endurance. How many people know that all of that is important, praise God? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is a series of 
little mini messages, so a lot of it's going to maybe overlap and repeat, and all these things I mentioned overlap anyhow. And I'm, I'm just going to give you a little maybe the Reader's Digest version of all of that today, and, and maybe every week as the week's going, we will get into more depth with Scripture. But uh, I, I want us to understand that it's not just one thing, it's everything. It's everything. You know, when I got up and took a shower this morning, I had to wash not part of my body, but every part of my body. Not only did I have to wash my body, I brushed my teeth. I flossed my teeth. Not only that, I took the razor and shaved what little hairs I could find on the top of my head and my neck. <laughs> so it's a process. It's not just one thing. We do a little bit of everything, praise God. We need to do a lot more of everything. I talked about believing in faith. Then we're going to talk about prayer and fasting. Then we're going to talk about praise until the breakthrough is there. And then we're going to talk about decree and declare, praise God. All of that, it's not just one, all of it is important, praise God. The Bible tells us to, to believe, to have faith, to have faith in one God, to, to have faith in, in Jesus Christ Almighty. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How many people believe that in here today? Amen. If you say, I do. I do. Praise I do. God. Do. And in Romans 10, 8, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. We'll actually start with 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart, say believe. believe. And that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, praise God. And said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Lord. Believing in God. We all say that we believe in him, but do we really believe in him the way we need to? You know what? The Bible says the demons believe in God. The devil believe in God because they know of him. You know, the Bible tells us that when the man had the uh, demon inside of him, the legion, and, and Jesus approached him, and it happened another time in the Bible too, and, and then the demons cried out, Son of God, Jesus, what do you? What will you do with us? What will you do with us? What will you have done with us? And Jesus, oh, we know, cast him out into the pigs itself. They knew who Jesus was. They knew that he had the power to do that. They knew it was God in the flesh walking among us. We believe that he's God, son. We believe that he's God. But do we really believe that he's God? I'm not talking out of both sides of my mouth. Listen to what I'm saying. If he truly is the God of Scripture, if he truly is the one that we say we believe in, do we believe in him as the God and acknowledge him as God as the demons do? Or do we believe in him, Sister Mary, as the God that saved us in Calvary, the God that we worship, the God that we trust? And if he is our God, do we live the life as if he's our God? That's the question. Do we live the life as if he's our God. Sometimes we claim victory in him. We claim that he is God. He is Lord God Almighty. But our, but our life does not show that. I'm not talking about everything going perfect in life. As a Christian, we know things will not go perfect. That's right. But we know that we have triumph and we will overcome obstacles through him. But knowing and acknowledge him as, as, as God, do we, have, do we have mercy and grace on everybody or just a select few? Do we forgive only those that we want to forgive and not forgive others? Do we have compassion on some and not compassion on others? Do we work with some and don't want to work with difficult people? You know, Jesus worked with everybody, praise God. The difficult, the good, the bad, and the ugly, praise God. So let the Jesus, let the God that's inside you come on out. If he's truly your God... If he's truly the one you believe in, we have to understand. We've got to really believe and trust in him and say, Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to trust you. And I'm going to lean on you, Lord God. I may slip and fall, but I know I can get back up because of you. Amen. But you are the one I believe in. You are the one I have faith in, praise God. We need to have that belief. We need to have that faith. I got faith. But I don't like Richard. I got faith. But I can't forgive, Gary. I got faith, but I don't want to work 
But that Kim, she's too difficult to work with. I believe in God, and God might bring me around someday, but I can't work with that April. That Sister Mary, the Lord have mercy on me. <laughs> she makes you work too much. Listen to what I'm saying this morning, people. Amen. Let, let, let the God that's inside of us come through. Come for Amen. Amen. If we truly have accepted him as Lord and Savior, if he is truly God of our life, if he truly, truly is the one that we profess to be our God, our Lord, and our Savior, our life needs to reflect that. Amen. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm pointing them to me. That's right. Every message I preach is directed to me. I want you to understand that. Yes. So many yes. times I'll get a comment on Facebook or or I'll, I'll, at somebody in church. Well, I know that message was for me. And sometimes they're doing it with a smile. Sometimes they go, I know that was directed right just to me. I said, well, no, it was directed to me. It was directed to me, praise God. You know what? The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 1, we, we hear this all the time. Listen to this. Now, we have to believe and we have to have faith in him, but it says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And it goes on to say in, in, in 11.6 of Hebrews, listen to this, but without faith, it's impossible, impossible to please God. So in order to please God, I have to have faith in God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we seek him in prayer. We seek him in prayer, praise God. We don't have to have a lot of faith. The Bible says all we have to have is a mustard seed side of, of, of faith. Just a little bit. And some say, why? I need more faith. You know what? The Bible says that he's given every man and woman a measure of faith. Now, we speak, he speaks of little faith. He speaks of a great faith, a mighty faith in the word of God. You know how we, how we get more faith? We already have enough faith for salvation. The greatest faith that you, that, that you need to put to test, you've already tested. When you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. That was faith in him. But you were being pulled by the spirit of God. He was directing you to come. And you came to the altar, whether it was in your bedroom, your car, or work, or at the altar at church. You got down on your knees and you cried out, Lord, I surrender everything to you. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I believe in you. That took faith to do that. But that faith wasn't just your faith. It was the faith that was being given to you by the Holy Ghost, drawing you to the Father. So you already have faith to do mighty things, but we need to exercise a little bit. I have a 57-year-old brother that, that took uh, New York uh, State Championship twice over the years, and he's been in different magazines, and he's a bodybuilder. And Man, this guy works out doing push-ups, exercise weights, everything you can imagine. If you saw his picture, you would, you would say, that's not your brother. I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, I'm bald, I'm short, I, I, I got the tummy and so on. And he's sitting there and he, he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's up there and, and, and some of you have seen him on Facebook and they say, I, we can't believe that's your brother. I said, I can't either. <laughs> but he is my brother. So if you talk to him, how did you get like that? He says, dedication, working three to four hours every day. And every moment as you're alive and living, watching everything that you eat and everything that you do. That's what we have to do as a Christian. Work our faith muscles. How do you work your faith muscles? Going out and stepping out of the boat in faith. Sometimes we don't want to step out of the boat. We want to keep say, hey, let somebody else pray. Let somebody else do that because what if I pray for them and nothing happens? Well, what if you pray for them and something does happen? Amen. That's right. We need to step out of the boat a little bit. Amen. Prayer and fasting, praise God. <clears throat> Prayer and fasting is, is important, praise God. The Bible tells us in the Gospel of Mark in chapter Chapter 9, about a man that came seeking Jesus and his disciples tried to tried to cast a demon out of his son that would throw him in the water and, and, and throw him in the fire to kill him. And, and how many people know that all disease, I'm, now, I'm, I'm being serious here, all disease and every affliction that we have in this world is because of the fall of man, Amen. is because of That's demonic right. spirits, demonic forces. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. I don't Amen. care if it's mental problems. I don't care if, if, if it's temptations. I don't care what sickness it is. I don't care. It's all from different demonic spirits itself. And this man had, a, had this boy had a demonic demon inside of him and, and he would throw himself in the fire and throw himself in the water. And the father knew this and the father brought him to the disciples and, and the disciples just couldn't cast him out. 
when Jesus comes walking back into camp with three of the other disciples, and he goes up to him, he says, Master, my son has thrown himself in the fire, he's thrown himself in the, in the water, and I asked your disciples to, to cast him out to heal him, and they weren't able to do that. And, and he says, please help us, please help us. Amen. When your child is sick, you're going to cry out and say, help my child. Save my child, God. Touch my child. Heal my child. And the man looked at Jesus as he said that. And Jesus looked at him and said, Do you believe I can do this? Do you believe I can do this? And the man said, Yes, Lord. But help my unbelief. One of the most honest statements you've heard in the Bible. Help my unbelief. I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. And the Bible says that Jesus commanded this demon to leave this boy. And the boy fell down and he shook and he went into convulsions and, and foamed up the mouth and all that. And the Bible said he laid there as if he was dead and somebody was dead until he started to move and Jesus rose him up. The disciples went to him and said, how can you cast him out, Lord, and we couldn't? He says, to do this, you need prayer. Not just prayer, we're talking about a fervent prayer. Right. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I'm talking about a prayer that you can feel in your gut. I'm talking about a prayer that comes on out. I'm talking about a fervent prayer that has power behind it. I'm talking about a prayer, not power with sound. I'm talking about sound and the Holy Ghost power behind it and saying I have to acknowledge what I have for this prayer to work. And I got the power of God working in me. And every Christian needs to say this. I got the power of God working in me through the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to lay hands, and I'm going to heal the sick, because the Bible says that we are able to do that, praise God. You need a fervency. You need power in your prayer. Amen. And you need to fast. And people say, well, we don't fast anymore. Well, sometimes we eat fast, but we don't fast the way we need to. And what I'm talking about fasting is stopping coffee or stopping sugar or stopping the certain foods itself. Even Daniel fasted for 21 days. He still ate, but he said he ate no pleasant food. He didn't eat the things he normally would eat. Praise he just God. ate something to sustain him, to keep him going for 21 days. Prayer and fasting. Fasting is giving up something that you might enjoy, something that gives you pleasure eating, whether it's steak, whether it's hamburgers, whether it's cake, whatever it might be. Sure. Giving it up to put your body in subjection, say, my stomach might yearn for this. My mind might yearn for this. My taste buds might yearn for this. But you know what? I do not walk in the flesh. Amen. I walk. I walk by the power of God. Praise I walk God. by faith in God. And I'm going to put my body into subjection. And when you can start controlling your craving, start controlling your thoughts, start controlling what your body wants and overcome that and push it aside, that is giving to God. Yes. That's what God wants. You're putting your body into subjection. So now we put our body into subjection. Now we go with this prayer with fervency, with vigor. And mighty things will happen, praise God. The Bible tells us the Bible tells us in, in James 4, 2, and 3, we have not, for we ask not. God knows what we have need of, the Bible says, before we even ask. But he wants us to ask. And he doesn't want us to ask amiss. And ask amiss is asking for something that is not going to be what he wants for the glory of his kingdom, praise God. Not us, but everything is for the glory of God. How many people understand that? Amen. I asked for this from God, and God never gave it to me, Pastor. Why? Well, maybe it's not because he wants you to have it. Well, so if you ask anything in my name, he'll give it to you. If it's going to help the kingdom of God. Yeah. Is it helping your kingdom, or is it helping the kingdom of God? Right. The Bible tells us in 1 John that, that he'll give us anything we want, anything that we ask for, oh, if it's according to his will. Right. Right. We have to remember that according to his will, praise God. Going back to, to Daniel 10, Daniel prayed for 21 days. He had prayed earlier, the Bible said, and he got an instant answer. And we know that Daniel was all throughout uh, the book of Daniel with Nebuchadnezzar and, and the other kings and, and the lion's mouth was shut and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We've heard the stories many a time in this church. But he had prayed and someone said, what, what is he praying for? Sometimes we overlook that. All he was praying for was guidance. Right. He was praying for guidance. He wasn't praying for a miracle. He wasn't praying for someone to come back from the dead. He wasn't praying for a healing. Lord, I need understanding. I need guidance. Show me what to do. Show me what's going to happen with Israel. Show me what's going to happen to my brothers and sisters. He prayed and nothing happened. He fasted. He was putting his body into subjection. He was praying fervently for 21 days. Not one day 
went by where he did not fast and pray. 21 days of prayer. Ooh. We pray 15 minutes, something doesn't happen, we change program. Right. We pray 15 minutes, does something that doesn't work, we change churches. We pray 15 minutes, something doesn't happen, we change spouses. We pray 15 minutes, something doesn't happen, we give up. Yes, Amen. We, do. Yes. we want instant results all the time. We're the now generation. I want instant tea, instant food, instant coffee. If I wait more than one minute to get a hamburger at the line at McDonald's, I'm going to Burger King. Listen to what I'm Preach saying it, today. Brother. 21 days of waiting. Yes. 21 days of waiting for an answer. Just to be shown what to do. This is important. I need to get this out. God's telling me this right now. Listen to what I'm saying. He did not do anything on his own until he heard from God. That's right. Just because he didn't hear from him that night or the next night, he didn't change. So, well, maybe I'll do this. Maybe God will approve of this. He waited 21 days. And there's a reason why he waited. God heard him the first moment that he spoke. But in 21 days, an angel of the Lord touched him on the shoulder and says, You know what? God heard your prayer request. Richard, the first time that you've spoken. Amen. The first time you speak your prayer request, Brother said, God hears that request, praise God. Sometimes we don't get the answer, Brother Bill, that we want instantly. It's because there's a battle going on in the heavens itself. And this angel said there was a battle in heaven with the, with the king of Prussia, which he was referring to Satan, referring to the devil. God is sending the messenger down. We got the message that's going to be sent to you. You're going to have understanding and have the wisdom. But there was a mess, there was a battle and a mess going up in heaven itself. And in fact, this angel said we had to call reinforcements. We had to call Michael, the archangel. He came down fighting, fighting to get the message through itself. But guess what? The angel is saying, I'm here today. I'm here today with a message from God. Prayer. Fasting. And that is also, I should add one in there, endurance. Those that endure to the end, the Bible says, shall be saved. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Then once we believe in God, once we trust in God, and once we make Him number one in our life, we go into the prayer life, our fasting life, praise God. And then we go into another phase after that. It's called praising Him. Praising Him until the breakthrough comes through. Amen. The sister spoke of this and even preached to him. And we all have in this church before. Praising Him until the victory comes through. It's not just praising Him. I can praise Him all day long. But if I don't believe the victory and the praise is just giving Him homage, giving Him glory. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna believe in him. I'm gonna believe in his promises. His promises are yes and amen. And then what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fast, and then, and then I'm gonna pray earnestly. And then now, after I pray earnestly and I fast, I'm gonna start praising him, praising him for the results that he's about to do. Praise God. You know what the Bible tells us that that John and and and, 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 and or Paul rather and Silas were in the inner part of the prison after they got beaten. They were in the inner part of the dirty dungeon, and they were in bonds and stocks and all that. And the Bible said they started to worship God and praise God. They were praising God with songs. Sometimes we praise God with the word. Other times we might praise Him with music. We praise Him with song. And He was praising God, Brother Richard, and, and Silas is praising God. And here's the witness. To, here's the witness that we need to do. We talked about this yesterday. God commanded us all to be a great witness throughout the world for Him because we're filled with the Holy Ghost and can do that. Now, they're praising Him. Their backs are open, bloodied itself. They're tired. They're hungry. But they're starting to praise Him. And, you know, what? when troubles come, we start crying. We, we start, oh, Lord, help me. We need to stand up and say, you know what, Sister Mary, let's hold hands in victory. Let's start praising God and thank Him for what He's done. To what he's to do. Because i got a God that can do anything. I'm going to hold on to Him. I'm not going to let go. And I'm going to praise Him. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the next day. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to praise Him. 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 And I'm not going to let go. I'm going to give Him songs of praise. I'm going to give Him glory. I'm going to shout because I got a God. Brother Gary, I got a God that can heal you. I got a God that can heal me. I got a God that's alive today. Praise God. Praise Him. No matter what you're going through, praise Him. No matter what you're going through, give Him glory. And the Bible says the bonds broke off. The stocks broke off. The prison shook. This is the witness that you're giving to the world. Amen. Now, 
Not one prisoner left. Not one prisoner left. And the jailer was about to kill himself because he knew he would have been responsible. And through the revelation of God, Paul shouts out, don't harm yourself. Not just we're here, we're all here. All those prisoners could have took off. Not one left. Because they saw what was going on. They wanted to see and hear the rest of the story. Amen. He went up to the jailer. And here's what the jailer said. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and your family will be saved. Power. Power in praising God. Jehoshaphat had three armies coming against him. And you know the story there. Amen. They prayed. They fasted. And somebody in the congregation stood up and said, God wants me to tell you something. This battle is not yours. It's God's. Yes, praise God. But still get ready for the battle. But God's going to do the work. The Bible says that they got ready for the battle. And Sister Mary, they put all the singers out there. Let's put Brother Richard out there. We'll put Sister Kim out there, Sister Heather. We'll put all the singers, musicians out front. And we're going to march behind them. They're not going to be on the sides. They're not going to be behind us. They're going to be right in front of us. And the Bible says they started to praise God and give God glory. And then the Bible says that the three enemies that were against them, started to fight among themselves, and they all died, killed each other. And so as they came over the hill, they saw all the bounty and got their name. The power of praise. Amen. When you feel Bless him sick, Lord. when you feel down and out, when you feel depressed, just start praising God. Praise just start praising God. God. Just start praising God. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise. Praise. Break every stronghold. Glory. Bless him, Lord. Praise. The Father, the Lord. Praise him loudly with your voice. The Bible tells us that and we know the story about the ten lepers that came and saw him. He said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they started to walk in faith, 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 the Bible says that they're starting to be healed. But the Bible tells us there was one that was a Samaritan, so he couldn't have really show himself to the priest, but he went back to the high priest, yes. which is the one that healed him, Jesus Christ. Thanks, God. And if you read the Bible, it doesn't matter if it's King James or one of the other versions. Praise it God. says he came back to God yes. and praised and worshipped him. Amen. Praised, there's power in praise. Praised and worshipped him. Yes, yes God. Did. Amen. And then Jesus looked out at him and said, Go, your faith has made you whole. Yes. I believe, Brother Sam, not only was he healed, he was already healed. Lord. But when Jesus said, your faith has made you whole, I believe if he lost a finger, lost a nose, and part of an ear, I believe that was restored instantly. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Lord, Jesus. Lord. Going into degree and declare. The Bible tells us in the 17th chapter of 1 Kings that Elijah, Made a declaration. There's not going to be any rain for three and a half years. And there was no rain for three and a half years. And then he made another declaration when God commanded him to do it. Bring down the rain. And he brought down the rain by declaring it itself. Declaring something is a state that we do loudly of a fact that we know. Amen. Decreeing is something that we do with authority and command. We, start, we have to start declaring and decreeing things in our life. We have to start standing up and decreeing, you know what? I'm no longer going to be this way anymore. I'm going to act like a child of God. I'm declaring that right now to the heavens before my God. You know what? I'm not going to be sick anymore. I declare that and decree that right now before my God and the world and all those around me. I'm not going to be depressed anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to claim healing right now. I'm going to declare it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to declare healing on my church, healing on my relationship, healing on my marriage, Lord God. I'm going to declare it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to declare, brother, I'm with you that you are healed and you are delivered. And right now, in Jesus' mighty name, praise God. You know, we need 
to stand up and declare it. We need to claim it. You know what? We 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 do it with a whisper. Yes, Lord. I declare everything's going to be okay. Amen. When you declare something, you're doing it with a shout. That's right. That, that's, that is what the Bible is telling me. That's what the dictionary says. It's something. When you speak something, you can do that in a whisper. But when you declare something, it's mighty. You're doing it with a shout. Say, yeah, I declare victory in the name of Jesus. You know what? We were talking a little bit the other day and the day before about us being men. And I should have went into a little bit more at the men's meeting. We have a special calling, Brother Richard. We need to stand up and take charge of our Amen. church, charge Amen. of our family, Amen. charge of our ministry. Amen. We've been made in the creation of Jesus Christ, of God Almighty. We need to stand up in victory and say, you know what? I'm going to stand up as a man, as a righteous man, as a holy man right now, and I'm going to take charge. Not in a assortive way, not in an abusive way, but I'm going to take what God has given me and command the devil to be lost, command the devil to leave, and I'm going to declare healing and, and hope. Yes. Thank you. For the hopeless, I'm going to declare Amen. healing Thank for the addict. Thank you, I'm going to declare wellness That's for right. those that aren't well. Amen. I'm going to declare my children Amen. to be well. I'm going to declare my Amen. children to have somebody get in their life that can bring them to the Lord. Yes. Yes. I'm going to yes. declare the right people to become part of their life. I'm going to also declare that the ones that are in their life that are not right, that God separate right yes. now. Separate from the right now. Yes. Bad company yes. corrupts good morals. Right. I want that bad company, not that we hate them, but I need a separation from my children right now. I need them to be separated from your children right now. I need them to be separated yes. from all our children right now. And say, bad company be bound right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We can find anything and lose anything. And the rain heart that's a done in heaven. So why not bind the devil? Why not bind the ones the devil is using and say, you know what, we love you, but I'm going to bind you right now because your father's not Lord God Almighty. Your father's the devil himself. I bind you, and there's a separation right now. Yes. Separation right now. How many people believe we can do that, praise Amen. God? Amen. I believe it. Start out with believing in faith. Right. Go into prayer and fasting. Thank you, sir, Jesus. Then get into the mindset of praising him until the breakthrough comes in. Amen. And along with that is all crossover. Declaring it, declaring it and agreeing what's going to happen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that God called those things that are not as though they were. Glory. Abraham, because it was a promise of God, also did the same thing. I'm the father of many nations. Not that I will be one day. I am the father of many nations. I'm old. I'm decrepit. I have no children. My wife is old. As everybody's looking around. But I'm going to be the father of many nations. My young 75-year-old wife and I, we're going to have a baby. And when he turned almost 100, guess what? Yeah, they had, had a baby. baby. Yep. I think she would have been 60. She was 90 and 100. Had a baby. Lord have mercy. Can you see a 100-year-old having a baby? Sister Mary just had a birthday. She's only in her early 80s. Can you see Mary holding a little baby walking around? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, she has already anyhow. Yes, yes. <laughs> God. Start declaring. Start decreeing. Get out. Get out of this negativeness. Amen. It ain't gonna work. It's like people with sickness. My father had a bad heart. His father had a bad heart. I'm probably gonna have a bad heart. My mother had nerve problems. I'm probably gonna have nerve problems. All my family has sugar. It's like a curse. You know what? There's one that already broke the curses. Amen. This is what I'm saying. He became a curse Amen. for us. He Amen. took it upon himself. Amen. The only reason why we have generational curses today is because we claim it. That's exactly it. Listen to what I'm The only reason why we have generational curses today, and I hope somebody responds to this on Facebook, is because we claim it. Amen. So, well, we got a generational curse. You know, we're all alcoholics. We're all drug addicts. It doesn't have to be that way. Make a change today. 
Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, transformed by the renewing, renewing of your, of your mind. mind. Amen. Amen. Declare that. Decree it. Today, things change. Today, things change because I'm a child of God. Today, things change because God is with me. If God be with me, who can be against me? Today, it changes because God, with God, all things are possible to him that believeth. And I believe that, praise God. Today, things change because greater is he that is in you and he that's in me than he that's in the world. Today, things change. Don't get excited in church today and going out. That was a good message and I'm excited. And then go home and start going back into saying what you were saying. Go home today and say, you know what? Today things change. Today I'm healthy. Today I'm restored. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, J